Thank you. I want to talk tonight about leadership. We talked some about leadership with the vice mayor, so it's timely because the next meeting is the reorganization of city council and the selection of the mayor. And leadership is a near, subject near and dear to me. At 22, I led an armored cavalry platoon in the regular army. Later in the Army Reserve, I commanded an armored company for over four years, two years typically longer than most. I guess I did an okay job. After that, I was an instructor with the preeminent leadership school in the world, the United States Army's Command and General Staff College, where we teach a master level program to majors and lieutenant colonels so they can lead complex organizations. After that, I served on the staffs of several generals. I've seen good leaders, I've seen great leaders, and I've seen bad leaders. Good leadership is essential to all organizations, and poor leadership leads to mistakes and sometimes disasters. A recent horrible example of poor leadership led to the deaths of 13 service members in Afghanistan. Loveland is not facing life and death situations, but good leadership is indispensable to our city's future. I hope between now and the next meeting, you all council members will take some time to reflect upon what is a good leader before you vote for the next mayor. So what does define a good leader? Few people are born leaders. There is no one formula, but there are some things that are common guiding principles. <clears throat> Intelligence, self-awareness, honesty, professionalism. I've had the pleasure of speaking with nearly all the council members and I have no doubt as to your intelligence. So I turn to self-awareness. Our next mayor must be willing and able to talk to all council members because that is a part of, of self-awareness, to be able to perceive what other people think must be able to talk to committee members, and most importantly, to our citizens. The mayor must be willing to acknowledge and learn from past mistakes, and a good mayor understands that words and actions must be applied fairly and evenly. Now, aside from my military experience, I've been a practicing attorney since 1986, and worked under several different elected prosecutors. Lawyers seldom make good leaders. I know that. The trait that holds us back is self-awareness. Lawyers tend to be lone wolves. Most lawyers, even those within legal organizations, are trained to be independent workers and have an adversarial mindset. And finally, we know we're right. Sometimes we're not. Lawyer leaders must constantly strive to overcome their legal training and their legal experience. Self-awareness, leavened with a bit of humility, is a critical skill that is needed and all too frequently deficient in most lawyers. I dwell on this because several council members are lawyers and any of them could be, could be our next mayor. Now I'm not saying lawyers can't be good leaders. It's just that lawyers all too frequently fail as a leader because of hubris and conceit. No one person creates the perfect answer to every problem. Professional people problem solving usually begin with honest understandings of the problem and the open brainstorming of appropriate courses of action with others sometimes with others that don't agree with us. <clears throat> Better solutions usually evolve, and they are refined with input and analysis from a variety of people. Generally, the more input it is, the better. Rather than including people, <clears throat> Loveland's recent leadership, Mr. Fitzgerald, Ms. Bailey, have fallen into an unfortunately all too common pattern of shutting out divergent ideas and silencing alternate viewpoints to the disadvantage of the city. Honest appraisals of issues before Loveland were ignored, pet projects were presented almost as a fait accompli. Poor leadership leads to, led to significant change in council members under Mr. Fitzgerald, and that surely will repeat again as the recent election has shown. <clears throat> I urge each of you to take time to reflect on your decision for the next mayor. Most successful organizations need change leadership frequently, every couple of years. The Army does it every two years. There's a reason for that. Fresh ideas are important. Fresh viewpoints are important. <clears throat> the past election, the citizens were clear in their message. Heed the lesson taught by the citizens with that election. Move Loveland forward with a new mayor, someone who is willing to listen and lead. Finally, <clears throat> notwithstanding my bias against my chosen profession as leaders, I have seen an exception regarding one lawyer on council. The voters seem to have agreed, as he has won the most votes of both elections when he has run for city council. After thoughtful reflection, I urge you to select Mr. Butler as our next mayor. Thank you.